Why, good morning. Welcome to another road trip adventure on the Cactus Atlas. Today I'm taking you on a little ride along from Lake Tahoe to the Eastern Sierra near Mammoth Lakes, California. So today is the interesting day. I've left several hours after my planned itinerary time to leave. Mainly my fault this time. I It was so cold here last night. My goodness. I have a sleeping bag rated for 30 degrees and I think it was originally my trip was planned to be like in the low 40s but it definitely got in the 30s last night. I don't know how far down but my I think it was pushing the limits of my sleeping bag. I could feel cold starting to poke through so when my alarm went off when it was still dark and I was supposed to be packing up my tent I said uh-uh hit snooze and just not really because I was tired but I was too cold and then I fell asleep and then I woke up and I must have needed to sleep but we're a little bit behind. No worries though because I think my itinerary today my arrival time was early so it's all gonna work out. Right now heading south the sun is really in the worst one of the worst possible places it could be. It's right off camera up on the top so I'm driving right into the sun all my fault for leaving late. I take the blame. We're driving down Lake Tahoe Boulevard now. We're seeing all of the businesses and I guess the more touristy areas. A lot of lodges, restaurants. When I had previously thought of Lake Tahoe, like this is the kind of stuff I always had in mind. I stereotype a lot and just say, oh, I don't want to go there. There's gambling and partying rich people. I don't fit in with any of those. So it's like, where do I go? And when I was doing research, I realized the California side is uh, all in the woods, so now you see how I work. And this appears to be, I guess, the big party spot. I see a Harris Casino. I see some other kind of casino. Harvey's? Is that a casino? Get me the hell out of here, please. Today hopefully should be a lot of good views from the car too as we eventually are driving down 395 along the eastern Sierra Nevada mountains the whole way. Which I guess are these part of the eastern Sierra? I know I've been in a lot of regions where regions meet like the Great Basin. Lassen was where the Great Basin the Cascades and the Sierra kind of all meet in that general vicinity, if I remember something I read correctly. So I'm, I'm not, I'm gonna, if I had to guess, this is part of the Eastern Sierra that we're currently in here. Now how my ears have not popped yet is a very strange thing. I usually get a lot of ear popping when we do these very abrupt elevation changes, so my ears have not popped yet. This is just keeps going down and going down. I guess we are going to get a good view looking straight onto these, so I don't really have to find a parking spot to do it. I mean, look at that. We just came down from way up there somewhere. Ah, the views just opened up beautifully here all of a sudden as we head down 395 south.
so many cool places up and down 395 also. So I'm going to estimate somewhere like these big mountains in front of you, there's a pass called Tioga Pass and Yosemite National Park, everybody knows Yosemite, right? Is going to be way back in there somewhere. And you might have to drive an hour or two. I, that whole area is really big, but um, we drove through it on that trip a couple years ago on our way to Hetch Hetchy. Didn't spend any time in Yosemite, the types of things you're thinking of El Capitan. I still have not seen any of that. Still want to do it. Yosemite is a tough one to plan, man. The, the campgrounds book up so far in advance. And as I'm learning, even what I saw on this trip at Sugar Pine, technically that campground I stayed at was booked solid. If you go online, you would not find anything. Yet last night on Thursday, one of the days where there was barely anything available, half the campground is vacant. So proof that people just make reservations and then eat the cost. I'm sure Yosemite is the same. I bet you could go in there and find a spot. And still grappling with how can you solve that problem? I think the best way to solve the problem is just get rid of reservations altogether and make it first come, first serve all the time, as much as I hate to say that. Because it's just, it's not a good way to do it. Because it's, campgrounds are cheap enough where people just, for a lot of people, they don't care if they eat the cost or not. And then it goes unutilized. All right, I'm gonna film our ascent up to B -b 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 Bodie, Bodie, California. It is beautiful country back here though, isn't it? Mm. this there's this little pull off where if you have a trailer or something you can detach it here in this lot but three miles the last three miles are up this gravel road it says rough road I'll be the judge of that this is not a rough road come on <laughs> now that I'm off-roading a lot more I'll tell you what I think this is a very to me this is a very well maintained smooth road to be honest I would not call this rough today. Maybe it is at different times, but you could see where it goes up that way. It's 15 miles an hour. You're gonna get your first look at Bodie actually from right here. You could see tailings, waste rock piles off on the horizon. That's where the big mill is, I think. And I do see a lot of old buildings already. Uh, but you really can't see, I think, the whole town until we get closer to see the scale of what I'm talking about here. But that certainly is Bodie up ahead. You can see how much they mine too. There's lots of waste rock piles over here. So I don't recall this from last time, but they offer you for $3 extra a self-guided tour booklet. So if you want to know what all these buildings are and stuff, you want that, trust me. Because even last time they didn't, I didn't get that last time. They didn't offer me that last time. I don't think I found anything. I remember walking around and there's no, let's see, how's internet looking? Zero internet. So you can't really rely on, rely on internet for facts on the fly. But today is just a quick tour. I plan on walking down like to the main street, show you some of my favorite sites, and then we got to hit the road. Um, one of these days though, you better believe it, we'll be doing that deep historic narrative that I crave to do in places like this. Maybe when I retire one day and have time. So we came in from somewhere over that ways and saw this from up high. This is Bodie Ghost Town. A gentleman named Bodie, B-O-D-E-Y, according to the sign, not the way they spell it now, discovered gold here in 1859. The town you're about to see reached at the height of its boom in 1881 and there were some 65 some odd saloons here, many boarding houses, we even had church, and eventually electricity as you're gonna see. They even talked about how you may have found oysters shipped here from San Francisco on ice, and even ice cream, and lots of whiskey, Bodie Lightning, an 
on the north side of town is where all the bad guys would hang out and get all liquored up and spit and cuss and kill people, maybe. Well, here it is, folks, the beginning of the tour, and there's so many streets you can go in. And this church, if I recall, is an 1800s relic. lots to see here. It's almost unbelievable. But there's a street down here. I'm going to show you my favorite building to date. When we get down there, I see it. I don't know if you guys can spot it. So this may have been the main drag or one of the main drags in the town. And just look at how these things are preserved in the mill up there. And that, that wasn't here last time, I don't think. But still, you could go window shopping right now, over a hundred years later. Look in these places. I mean, this is fantastic. Think of ghost towns, the stereotypical ghost town. This is what <laughs> I think most people think of as something that looks like this. Just looking up and down the street here and just trying to take myself back to the old west where a lot of this wood would have looked a lot fresher and things wouldn't be leaning as much. This looks like this was a hotel. There's a sign inside of it. We'll take a peek. The Bodhi Hotel. There's a sign here. There's still furniture in here and everything. And suitcases. <laughs> Bodhi Hotel. Meals at all hours. Oh my gosh. I don't remember seeing this one. There's actually a... a some taxidermy up on the wall. I'm gonna have to try this with my other camera. I apologize, but you can still see the ornate designs of the old walls of this hotel and a pool table to boot. Before I reveal my favorite, favorite building, I wanna show you a cool one over here that I like too. I mean, I like everything here. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, last time I know we walked up this road up that ways, but I was not able to do any of that. I think they do a tour of the mill. They were last time. I never got to explore any of that. And there's a section over here that I really didn't get to explore at all. I think I came about this far to see this old firehouse. I mean, isn't this a beautiful specimen? This appears to have been a barber shop. That's supposed to be a barber pole type thing. Barbers back then, the scope of their job was much different. If we had that guide, we would know. I probably should have just paid the three bucks, but we'll take a peek in this one too. Maybe something will peek back at us one of these days. Whoa, there's like a bar in there. This is a difficult, exercise to do but I see a bar some tables and we'll peek in the barber shop and see if we see a uh, anything that resembles oh yeah you see an old barber's chair in there and as most of you probably know barbers back in the olden times the scope of their work was more than just cutting hair I think they were there to tend to 
minor wounds. I've heard maybe even pulling painful teeth out of people's mouths. Kind of a multi-purpose job. Almost not quite a doctor, but I guess someone to take care of common things like that. I recall these, this trio, or maybe four buildings and the brick one down here are among the faves for sure. You even see like the old curtains and tatters. Isn't it just amazing how everything's still in there like that? I'd like to know the story of that. How did so much get left here? Or did they come back retroactively and find old drapes and then rehang them or were they literally just left like that to the ages? And why did the former owners not take their property with them? Why is there so much left in these things? Let's take a peek in this one. You can see me really well. <laughs> but you could still see, look at the whole counter in there. I mean, I guess these have all, have so far have all been like saloons. We've seen a lot of bars. Almost every building's got a bar in it, it seems here. Any ghosts in there though? They have this closed off, but you could see this original brick. And this went somewhere, but they have that shut off now. But even the stairs are just very crooked. So I'm going to scan over this here in my favorite building here. Which one do you think it is? Oh, is it that one? It might be. I don't know what it is about this one. I don't even remember what it was but I love the way it leans. And it, to me, that just screams the Old West more than any of them, I don't know why. Maybe because it's in a bad state. And you can see they've propped up something to hold it up, otherwise that would have tumbled by now. I just am wondering, is this one of these trips out here? Will this thing be fallen one day? High wind comes through here. Some bad weather, which I'm sure they get plenty of whatever this was. Let's stick our nose in here. You see it has a, uh, looks like old wallpaper on the walls, some kind of fabric. And I see a bed back there. Makes me think that this was would be like a residence or a boarding house of some sort or a small hotel here in this busy district, but I could absolutely be wrong. But look at all of the uh, interior supporting they're doing. This thing's got lots of support beams in it, which I am a fan of. I would rather see this stand the test of time, even if they had to give it even more TLC than this, I would be a buyer because I don't want to see this ever go away. This seems to be a fan favorite too. A lot of people spend time photographing this one. It is numbered, so the walking tour would remind us what it is. My info is two years in my head now. <laughs> That's two years too long. I do remember this building as a schoolhouse. And if you look in here, there's still stuff in here from, I think, school desks and things for the students still. And old Halloween decorations. Look, that looks really ancient. Amy would love that. Isn't this epic when it comes to ghost towns? Now do you understand why I always compare everything else to this place? There are other places out there that might compete that we haven't seen yet for sure. Montana's got some, Colorado, so maybe one day. But still, this is the town that I judge every other one against.
would be really good to do if we had more time. It's a half an hour long film loop about the town. Well, I told you it was gonna be fast and furious. I just wanted to poke my head in here and check the current status and breathe it all in again. But we have to get back on the road because we do have more places to be and more to see. Hopefully this made you want to come here sometime. Bye bye, Bodhi. I have a feeling we will meet again. Back in the car we go. And I think on the way back down, maybe we'll get some better views since we're coming from up high. And we're going to head now towards Levining and Mono Lake, where I want to check out a little bit of Tufa before we head to our campsite, which is still a little bit of a drive away. $8 is very reasonable, I would say, for what you get. It's one of the few times where I would pay, say I'd pay more for this than 8 bucks. I had to get around that van because I wanted to get this view for you, unfortunately. Reflections in the windshield. But it's still pretty. A lot of clouds gathering though. Zero percent chance of rain. I'm gonna keep saying it over and over and over. So off to the left, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but if you are, it's probably gonna be right about now. I, it is in your frame of view, it's Mono Lake. Way down, straight ahead, I'm about to turn again. and That's where we're heading to get a different perspective on it that we never got before. There's different parks, I think, situated around the lake, and we were on the, I don't know if it was the southern side, I guess, of the lake. There's like a little park, and we explored that area. It was fantastic. So we'll see what we can see today. I don't know, we might just stop and peek and make up a little bit of lost time. But it wouldn't be right not stopping when we're right by it. All right, I'm gonna catch back up with you when we hook up with 395 again. No need to rehash these beautiful hills for a second time, even though it's a unique view coming out. about 15 minutes away from Mono Lake. A very popular saline lake here in uh, California and a very important refuge for certain types of animals. There is a vista point and I'm gonna take advantage of it, screw it, because I don't know if we're gonna get a better view of Mono Lake than from up here, to be honest. This is a drone's eye view. Even better than a drone's eye view, I would say. This is a weather balloon's view. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making crap up now. You see that? That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to call this the $2 million view. Maybe $1.5 million because of all the road noise but better than a one million. I believe that would be 395, the road we're gonna be taking, going off in the distance. And there's a town on this side of the lake called Lee Vining. And I think where we wanna get our view of the lake, but you can see Mono Lake is gigantic. And I know there are, I think, at least two islands. I wanna say it's a volcanic thing going on over there too, if I remember correctly. Absolutely superb up here. I never really got this view on the last trip or saw it or paid attention, I guess. I don't recall anyway, but what a fantastic view of Mono Lake. So once again, it's a saline lake, very saline. They've got these weird flies that live in it. You'd think it's gross, but they're an important part of the ecosystem. Brine shrimp, a very important ecosystem. And I think the lake is much smaller than it was in its prime because LA drains a lot of the water from this region and San Francisco too, I think. 
I remember my last trip in here, I came from Tonopah, which surprisingly isn't terribly, terribly far from here. I know I can't, it's probably out that way somewhere, but so Nevada's not far off from this region. And this talks about the Great Basin, which we've driven through a lot of that on this particular episode. So I think this is saying maybe this is part of the Great Basin and here to the Eastern Sierra, you can see off in the distance, even more mountains. So do I, so do I. Let's pull out of here and continue down. I'm gonna keep rolling here, cause uh, it's pretty stuff. All these really interesting rock formations down here too. Almost looks like the Alabama Hills. It's like you're coming down out of the sky, cause you kind of are. Pretend we're flying a plane. I love how it like the views twist and turn too. So you get some mountains, then you get some lakes, then you get some distant shots. Really cool drive going down this way on 395. Now you know why they call it the scenic byway. Mono Lake is somewhere where I want to get the kayak out because I think you can kayak out to some of the islands in the middle. And I think there was trying to remember whose video I saw, but I think there was an old, uh, maybe it was a tuberculosis retreat or something out in the middle of an island or something like that. Um, there's nothing really left there anymore other than maybe just rubble, but it was Wonder Hussy. That's who it was. I know some of you watch her channel. I think she's the one that paddled out there. And I remember seeing that. I'm like, I want to do that one day. So there's a sign here, County Park Mono Lake Access. I, I want to say this is where I was wondering if we could go down here. I have not been here, so I'm just going to go check out this county park, see if we can see some tufa. I do see some tufa down here. I see a lot of tufa down this ways. What I don't know is, is it better than the spot across the lake that I'll point out to you? Or the general direction anyway, because I can't see that far across. There's a really cool little park over there where you get to walk among some really beautiful tufa with the mountains in the background, the whole shebang. Probably where you see people go most commonly. So this is Mono Lake Park. I don't think this is what I saw on my map when I was thinking of visiting, but hey, if there's lake access, we're good. There's a boardwalk trail, in fact. Nice, peaceful, crickety. You hear the little crickets? Actually, this is what I was trying to get to, I think. There's a visitor center somewhere off this direction, and it was a state natural reserve area here that I saw on maps, and you see these weird rock formations, the gray color. Well, that's Tufa. And see, so you can see, I was right, and I remember this from the other side, in 1941, this is where the shoreline of the lake was. And we still have a ways to go, because modern man sucking the water dry, the big cities. Is it San Francisco or LA or both, or I always forget what caused this. I want to say Los Angeles. And here's another uh, interesting sign. Mono Lake in 1959. So each, the further you go in time, the shoreline recedes. Ah, look at that. Here's part of what makes Mono Lake so famous are these very strange formations. It almost feels like you're in like an aquarium and these are like aquarium rocks or something like that or a, you're like we're like in a under the sea in a coral area. 
a coral forest. Oh, I didn't realize it just ended here. I thought we were gonna get to go down the shore. Well, this is kind of a small dud. Although this is a really good area to probably watch birds in. You don't really get to get up close to the tufa like you do on the other side. So I would make a declaration right here and now the other side is much better when it comes to walking around the tufa because there's really crazy formations. You got things out on the lake like that too, but what you don't have over there is all this kind of a uh, habitat for birds. I don't remember any of that. And apparently the lake not that long ago would have come up here and they're trying to get the elevations back up, but then you combine it with drought and yeah, just the shoreline keeps getting further and further away. That's fun. It's like, why are you not down at the lake? Well, because the lake keeps receding. You could see though how many ducks and birds are out there because it is a refuge for them. And I'm just out there doing their birding business and there's like a whole ecosystem that lives in here with shrimp and fl these flies that live here that you could see in the water. It's kind of freaky, but cool. And then tufa. And tufa, just a quick thing, is if I remember correctly, it's basically fossilized springs. So at some point this would have been underwater and springs would bubble up. And I think it's calcium carbonate, the mineralization in the spring, you know, bubbling up over time builds up. Kind of thinking, is it like hard water in a house and hard water minerals? Maybe not too far off, but you see these towers on the landscape here. Um, that is tufa and you're, and that's what you're seeing. Unfortunately, the tufa here is pretty lame compared to the other side, if I'm just being honest. So when you come here, I'm thinking we're, we're facing south, so I'm guessing that's the southern end of the lake. And we're, and that's 395, so if we go this way, the direction we're going is south. So I'm gonna say like the southern end of the lake, or, you know, that's where the better spot is, and there's an official park over there. So that's where I recommend you do your Mono Lake visit. If you're a bird watcher though, then this side might be the one that you want. If you wanna look at ducks and cattails and all these reeds and stuff, if that's your deal, then yeah, maybe this is the side you want. So if seeing it from up above, seeing it from here, hearing the tales of what's on the other side is something you're interested in, you wanna see more. We did a whole video on uh, this uh, Mono Lake on the other side, devoted a whole episode to it. So feel free to check that out. We'll put a link down below to that one too. But if you really wanna see Tufa, if you really wanna know what I'm talking about and why it's so magical, check that other one out. And now, Mono Lake, Tufa, not the best over here, no, no offense. We gotta get going. It's starting to get cloudy and chilly too. See, I told you, it's either hot or cold, nothing in between. All right, back to 395 we go by Mono Lake County Park. You're okay. I think we're gonna drive up here through Lee Vining, pick up any supplies I need, some gas, and then we just got about an hour to go, so I estimate we're gonna get there between 5 and 5.30 p.m. See those really big mountains, the Sierra Nevada off to the right, still snow capped, and somewhere out that ways is Mount Whitney, California's highest peak. Haven't really looked at how we're getting home or if I'm even filming on my return day trip. It's possible maybe we can get a peek at it, depending on what I end up doing. We're coming up on the Mammoth Lakes area, and that's the area I'm gonna be exploring heavily tomorrow, really. That's my only main day to try to knock out a couple things in that area. Never been there. That'll be a first. And my camping area is probably south of Mammoth Lakes because we're going further than the turn to get to Mammoth Lakes by a little bit. We're about 30 minutes away from the campground. It's called the East Fork Campground. I think, yeah, I was able to reserve it on recreation.gov. Another campsite that barely had any reservations. Anything in this area, even now, especially on the weekend, I was having a challenge finding any availability, especially for two consecutive nights. When I pull in there and I start exploring it, let's see how many people actually show up and how much vacancy there actually is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at that carefully on this one. <laughs> it 
my turn off of 395, something called Rock Creek Road is where our turn right onto Rock Creek Road is where our campground should be back somewhere in here apparently. Holiday Campground. We're in the Inyo National For Forest, by the way. I think we've been in the Inyo National Forest for quite a while. This whole area is part of that. I'm trying to think of things we've done near here. Bishop, California is not far, and we did these this hike in that area up to these uh, bristlecone pines that are thousands of years old. I really enjoyed that episode, too. That's another thing in this region that not going to be doing this time. There's more trails that I want to do in that area, but I thought that was a cool video. Maybe trees are boring to you, but if you want to see trees older than Jesus Christ, you can uh, see them there. Ooh, and I'm seeing lots of snow on these mountains back here. Burr. Here I am at East Fork Campground. We just arrived the tail end of our road trip here, where it's supposed to be, but I'm kind of having some second thoughts already. I kind of love the campground, but I kind of don't like the way they designed it. It's kind of weird. I'll show you my site really quick. I do have it reserved. My name's on the post, so it's all good. We're in this valley up in the Sierra Nevada, and um, let me show you what a fully booked campsite looks like. I mean, there's virtually nobody here, so there's no way you can tell me that this site, this whole campground is booked. Yet, if you went to recreation.gov, that is what you would see. Why I find that reservation system so problematic, because I knew this would happen. And it's kind of upsetting because there are better campsites than what I ended up getting. Let me show you this here and why I'm having second thoughts. There's two reasons why I'm having second thoughts. So my campsite, it wasn't labeled as a walk-in, but I'm telling you, it, it is. <laughs> really loose thing. I've got some pretty heavy stuff. My cot, you know, a few other things I could manage and get by. But I'm down here, actually, or I assume this is me down here, hidden away. Kind of like it, but I kind of don't. What I really don't like, though, is this is a very slanted sight. You see that? So after sleeping, you know, camping, Gosh, has it been seven days straight now? That part's not that hard. That's that's pretty easy. Just, but I'm tired too because I film all day long. This just isn't looking appealing at this moment. The second problem I have is it is freezing cold already. It's only just pushing five, and I have a hard time believe it's just gonna dip into the 30s tonight. I mean. There's no way. <laughs> My hands are starting to feel a little numb already up here. So here's where I'm at in my thinking. I walked around a little bit. I used the restroom. I can tell you the restrooms are fantastically beautiful. Running, running water, flushing toilets, a sink, at least two. I don't know if there's two more on the other side. Huge, like they look brand new. So very positive review there. Just a wonky campsite. It's like, you can see I'm even kind of, I don't know, the GoPro levels itself, so you probably can't see it, but I'm on a slant, kind of. And then the campgrounds, like I was confused because I would just see these small parking spots for cars and nowhere to put a tent. Well, each site, the way it's designed is kind of like mine where you have this little trail. I mean, not like 20 feet, 15 feet, we'll say, um, that I'd have to walk down. But really the thing that's uh, the deal breaker is the slant of that hill and the size of my tent. I can't get it. You know, there's nowhere to put my tent, basically, that's not, you know, going to work. It's either going to be really slanted in one spot or it's going to be level for half of it. And then the other half of the tent's going to be on a slant. Very awkward and weird. I sound like a prima donna, I know, but um, I've been going at it hard for the last few days. So I have an idea. I'm going to give myself a break this time, this one time. Maybe I'll peek at some of the other campgrounds. I wanted to camp at Convict Lake. But that was booked up. How much you want to bet if I drive up the road and turn in there, like, it'll be half vacant. <laughs> Maybe I could find a site on the fly. I did see some that were open, but most of them do have reserved signs on them. But I guess this is your campground review right here and why we're getting one less one out of this trip. 
this part of the campground is rad like seriously but that and i see what everybody's done everybody's gotten these sites because this is the good part i would have been happy i would have made a fire tonight i would have gone and buy some wood but i'm out in the, the weird area in the bushes the bears are roaming around in probably with on a hill side all right i pulled over to change a battery basically but i also did check my email just to see how much money i'm eating and it wasn't that expensive of a campground in fact it looks like even though i'm canceling now once i get internet um i might be able to get a partial refund still so that makes it more palatable from a financial perspective trying to be more professional and not waste money like that I have been one of those people that have made a reservation once or twice and I just, you know, it probably was cancelable cancelable up to a certain point and I didn't cancel soon enough and just uh, didn't show up. Ah, that's much better. I ended up taking a shower, I went across the street to get a big bowl of fettuccine alfredo with chicken, I overate, and now it's time to sleep. Thanks for joining me on this very crazy adventure today. I know it was a little wacky, but it is what it is. It's the rules of the road. Until next time, see you next week.